I don't know if I mentioned before in the other video, but I like to do both sleeves at the same time. The reason why is that it helps me keep track of what I'm doing so I can have a mirror image of each sleeve. Um, now, what I do whenever I'm pinning, and we'll start on this uh, sleeve over here first. Um, we're going to go ahead. I'm not going to, I'm going to be uh, stopping or starting, depending on which one I'm working with, but on this one, it's going to be stopping about a quarter of an inch away. And the reason why for that is I don't want to go all the way to the end because uh, I will be trimming off some excess later on. So the last pin over here, I'm going to use that as a reference point of where to stop the stitching. Then for the beginning here, well, let me go ahead and uh, start pinning a few more pins in. And you might want to go like about an inch and a half, two inches away. Just like so. And then we're going to want to start, uh, start on this one about half an inch away. And the reason why is, uh, I'll show you later when we're uh, putting the two sides together. But uh, like I said, we'll just start half an inch away on this sleeve piece right here. Then of course we're working on this, we're going to stop a half an inch away. Start a quarter, about a quarter of an inch, stop a half an inch. So hopefully that's... Uh, everyone can understand what I'm saying here. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to get a few strands of thread ready and go with whatever you're comfortable with. I usually go about, I don't know, I kind of guesstimate exactly how much thread I want to use and it's about a couple feet here. But you do that, you're going to need to wax your thread because it's not coated. And I usually run the thread about half of it over, you know, half of it about mm, five to seven times, depending. Um, usually you can kind of feel exactly you got a good coating of wax on there. You don't want to put too much, otherwise you're going to get wax all over your garment. But just enough on there so you get a nice even coating. And run, while running the wax through, I also want to keep my thumb over the thread while pulling it through and the friction itself will melt the wax onto the thread so but what I also like to do is I like to get a couple at least one or two uh, needles extra ready to go so that when I'm done with um, the length of thread on one needle and I need to start out uh, start going on another one I can do that I have it ready to go and that way it helps keep me going here so I'll do a couple of threads wax them get them all prepped um, I'm only going to show you my threading uh, or my stitching of one seam I'm going to use one of the shortest seams everywhere else I'm going to just kind of tell you what you can and cannot use and then sew it show you what it looks like uh, but because if I did that just like with the poke sack video I don't want to you know that that's that was like a 40 that's like a half hour project right there to be 40 minutes explaining all the stuff and yeah, I don't think anybody wants to sit here and watch me for 20 hours sewing this shirt. So, um, but we're gonna start at our first pin there, about half an inch away uh, from the edge of the gusset, like so. And I might want to zoom in here just a little bit. There we go. All right. We're gonna start about half an inch away, as you can see here. I'm half an inch. And we're going to start, actually, go just a little bit lower, right here. Now, whenever you're starting, and this is actually a tip that I got from a Godey's um, women's uh, manual, you want to probably, especially right here, you know, this is a high stretch point. You really want to, at least, or with any sort of seam, you really want to kind of start off and just sort of like bar tack in the area there. Um, now you could run with this line of stitch you can go with a back stitch or you can go with a uh, a running stitch and with this I'm just gonna go ahead and go with a running stitch and you want to do about six to eight stitches per inch and a little tip that I sort of came up with my own Measure a part of your finger and find out which one it is, like whatever part, whether it's a segment 
or a thickness or whatever that's about an inch or half inch or whatever and use that to help tell you and help guide instead of taking a measuring a ruler and all that and use that to kind of help guide you exactly how many stitches you're putting in per inch so it's a little tip that I sort of kind of developed on my own of course other people might have already had that out there but I've never heard of anybody else using it and I figure like I did with these videos show what I learn so some of it's stuff I had to learn on my own others is just other stuff is just from other people so but we go ahead we got our first line of stitching through and whenever you wax a thread and you're doing it like what I'm doing it's gonna be a little tough but after a bit you should be able to get it through okay now I've got stitches right here and what I want to do is I want to because I've already got that um, another little tip that I learned from the Godies manual is to do a back stitch after every every so often especially when you're doing a running stitch you want to start with a back stitch every so often and that's going to help you in the end keep um, you know a good strong seam and this is what we want we don't want this thing to fall apart we're spending a lot of time hand sewing this thing together ourselves we want this thing to last so um, especially since if you show all your parts like hey check out my hand sewing shirt and after a couple of events the thing just falls apart yeah they're really gonna probably think man this guy doesn't know how to do anything so I want you to I want you to be able to impress your parts out there and show them show them what you learn so try at the same time I'm trying to watch the camera and I'm trying to watch what I'm doing here and it's kind of hard so another reason why I want to just show you this one seam and then after that you can kind of go on your own and as for uh, you know and, and as for like learning how to do these stitches and all I found on YouTube here uh, other people it's not related to Civil War stuff but I found other people here who uh, show you how to do the stuff now don't be confused especially for the buttonhole stitch uh, the blanket stitch those are two different entire different you know styles of stitching so um, now if you want you can go I think there is a thing in the AC forum that has a, I think even John Weedward on his website has a thing for learning the different stitches or it might be 33 Wisconsin uh, but not only that though too but Elizabeth Clark I think her name is from the Sewing Academy she also has a few things on there too so that's a really really good spot uh, on the Sewing Academy don't ask stuff about questions about military uniform stuff they mostly deal with civilian stuff and just basic sewing how to so um, but really great website once again tons and tons of information on there if you have a question check on there first if you're still not able to find, figure out your question um, you know you can always PM me or whatnot so but look on there first and you know like I said these are pretty straightforward I'm trying to make this stuff as straightforward as possible and as easy to learn as possible so alright and we're getting close to our last couple of stitches on this seam here okay so I'm getting close towards the end here and just like when we started the beginning of the stitch I kinda wanna go ahead and do a few uh, just just a couple of stitches in the same spot here this is gonna help really strengthen our stitch and make sure that this thing is not gonna fall apart on us so just like so tie it off like so put this off to the side and take our pins out there alright so I got my two gusset pieces attached to my sleeve and the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing up the other side of the sleeve up so we can start getting a good sh basic shape out of it so 
I'll put this one off to the side here and we'll work on this one. Now we got we have it attached up along this side right here and what we're going to do is we're going to attach the other side of the sleeve to this edge along here. So what we'll do is we'll bring up the other edge of the sleeve and we're going to pin make sure you match edge to edge and pin about a quarter of an inch away just like what we did with the other seam and we'll put in a few pins on here I usually go ahead I'll put about like two Now I'm not going to finish putting on pins the rest of the way because what I want to do to help keep this nice and even is I'm going to match edge to edge on the end, the other end where the cuff goes on here. I want to go back about two and a half inches on here. And you want to make sure that when you're doing the other side you try to keep it as even as possible. And I'm going to put one pin in here. That's going to be our starting point on this sleeve. Um, or ending point, whichever side you are, but that's where the seam itself is going to start, uh, going to stop, and we're going to have enough here. It's going to give us about a two-inch vent um, on. Uh, well, actually, no, I'm going about two inches away, but you don't want a half-inch vent. You don't want a really huge, giant vent. Otherwise, it's going to look kind of weird. But anywhere between like two to two and a half inches back from the edge there is where you want to go, and then we're going to go ahead and start putting more pins down the length of the sleeve. And we're trying to keep this as even as possible and Doing pretty good so far. Now we're getting close to this part right here, and I'm going to zoom in once again. Okay, so we're at this part right here where the sleeve, well, the sleeve actually meets up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in one pin at where and if you kind of feel here you can kind of feel where like you stopped with the other seam and you're going to want to put one pin right at that point and that's going to tell you that it's no longer sleeve to sleeve but now you're at sleeve and gusset alright and then after that we'll put in our last pin for the sleeve to gusset on here And we got that all pinned up. So, all right, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start sewing. Now, when you're sewing, you know, like I said, start off with a nice uh, bar tack um, at the end over here, or at least a couple stitches in the same spot when you're starting. Then you can do your running stitch down. You could use a uh, back stitch if you want, though. But if you have good uh, thread and you're doing good, nice, tight stitching. You really won't have to do that, you know. Maybe occasionally throwing a back stitch on there, and that's going to help keep you give uh, give you a really good strong seam. The only thing that I'm going to be doing is that right where the actual point of contact where the gusset ends and it's just sleeve to sleeve, you want to put a, a little bit of a you want to put an actual like a bar tack and just do a couple stitches right there. I do that because that is a high stress point and you want to make sure you're catching the gusset and both sides of the sleeve at that point that's going to help keep that together because i have seen some shirts uh some other people that it just starts falling apart right there at that edge but that's going to help keep it nice and tight and then after that you can continue on on your gusset to sleeves um seam over here so i'll go ahead i'm going to pin up the other side and i'm going to sew uh these two parts together 
and yeah, we'll continue on from there.